Hello and welcome to the Wellborn Podcast. We invite you to join us on a journey 17 years in the making, which will eventually culminate in the creation of a unique place here in Hampshire. Driven by the vision and passion of a local landowner to create a new thriving community just north of Fairham, where alongside 6,000 beautifully designed new homes, the region will be enhanced with accessible green spaces, schools, shops, and much, much more. And I'm delighted to be joined as part of this series by some of the talented individuals behind bringing this project to life as visionaries, creatives, and architects who have all combined for this truly unique and one-of-a-kind development. And as part of this episode, it brings me great pleasure to have John Beresford with us, who is the Managing Director of Buckland Development. John, firstly, it's brilliant to have you here with us in the studio. Well, thank you for inviting me. And it must be a very exciting time for you. I mean, I've seen the e-brochure. I've seen the visuals from the site as well. There are workers on the ground. What's the atmosphere like on site when you're visiting? Oh, now? I mean, it's, it's amazing at the moment. You know, it's. Uh, it, it, I think you mentioned it's taken 17 years to get to this uh, to this point, and you know, it's people don't realise that these sort of these, you know, even smaller developments, not 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 big six thousand home towns, even you know, much smaller developments can take years and years to come through the planning system and. Um, and it, 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 it's only really sort of towards the end of that period you start getting into the bit that people really start to get turned on by in terms of the architecture, you know, where the schools are and all that sort of thing. Because 17 years ago, they were discussing things like the principles, you know, and, and whether or not it'd be an acceptable, you know, way of delivering all the homes for this particular region. But uh, now, now, now we're into the detail of working out sort of, you know, the doorknobs, the names of the streets and the sort of materials. I mean, it's, you know, what 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 flowers we're putting around the, some of the doors and stuff like that. I mean, it's um, it's the dressing. It's like sort of uh, like putting the icing on the cake, really. Well, the reason mm. for this podcast is we want to invite people to join us on the journey as mm. Wellborn develops. And of course, we want to get to know some of the personalities behind the project, which is why we've got you here today. So first and mm. foremost, tell us a little bit about how your love affair with buildings began. Well, it was a long time ago, really. I was sort of, uh, I wouldn't say I was a misfit at school, but I was some, someone who loved, um, I loved sort of the sciences and the engineering. But yet I also loved the sort of things like geography and stuff like that. So spatial, you know, I guess spatial planning, as you, you call it today. Um, so I went away and studied, um, studied sort of engineering at university. Um, I, uh, uh, sort of the girlfriend at the time, her father was, was big into building, you know. He had he, he had one of the the most amazing companies in the north of England, and uh, so at university, did you stay local? Because I know you grew up originally from Doncaster. You stayed local to well, where you were from. Or? Sort of, I was Nottingham, so it was sort of across the county boundary. So far uh, yeah. enough that yeah. you weren't too close to family, but any emergencies come home. I could get get the washing done, and all that sort of <laughs> all stuff. All of that—that yeah, that is yeah. an emergency when yeah, you're a student, ex right? Ex exactly. <laughs> so, um, but but you know, I remember him saying to me once, you know, he sort of said, you know, you ought to be a land buyer. And of course, I never know, didn't know what a land buyer was, but um, I worked, um, you know, did some work experience in different companies, and yeah, I sort of thought, yeah, it's, it's probably the sort of job for me. But actually, subsequently, then, then I got more um, more enjoyment out of actually getting involved. So land buyers, you buy the land and then you pass it on to the people who then do all the sort of the uh, the technical assessments in the building. And actually, that's the bit that sort of really, you know, because I'm quite practical and. Mm. And that's the bit that really sort of um, uh, sort of pushed my buttons. You know, they sort of brought in the, the the part of the engineering side of me in terms of how do you solve all the problems. And and that's 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 essentially what what I do in my day to day job. Really, you know, there's you know, um, it, it, it's I, I never profess to being the person with all the sort of the creativity or the flair. Um, I know what looks good and what doesn't. Mm. But but the bit that um, the bit that I can bring is the fact that you know it's sort of you know, calmly, hopefully, <laughs> touch wood, we, this is how you d deliver a town, you know, and this is what we want. These are what the facilities we need at that sort of moment in time and all that sort of stuff. So, so yeah, it was, um, it, it, I, that was my journey into it, really. It was sort of, a, um, as I say, a fa family friend who sort of spotted something in me and said, oh, this is what I think you should be good at. And I, I was very lucky to to take his advice. Yeah, I think for a lot of us, we meet, I guess you'd call this individual a mentor, right? Who yeah. kind of guides oh, it was, it you and sees the potential in you that you might have and, and what might also get your passion flowing. Yeah, I mean, you know, up in the north of England, there's, he was called Dick Watson and there were so many people that still to this day, you know, sadly died a, a few years ago. Um, but, um, you know, it, the companies that, that are still there, 
you know, a sort of bare testament to him, really. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, um, yeah, he was, he was a very good mentor. So you're almost part of that legacy in your own right as yeah, well. Yeah, the, the little things that, even today, the little things that I do, I always think that how would, how would, he, how would he tackle it? So he was, um, yeah, he was... He was uh, I'm not in his league, obviously, but, uh, you know, it was a great man. I think you're too mm. humble there, John, otherwise mm. you wouldn't be sitting in front of us now. But also, you mentioned there just yeah. about the balance between between the creative and the practical side of delivering the development. I think it might be quite nice for our people watching and listening to hear about where our current site at Wellborn actually is. Because doing my reading in it, you don't realise that there has to be all this infrastructure delivered for the works to even begin to happen, which is what's happening at the Wellborn site now. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. So there's such a long leading time in terms of, you know, pl plumbing and, and, you know, wiring a, a new town up, you know. So um, it's um, it, people, people say, oh, when, that, when their house is being delivered, it's like, well, hang, hang on a minute, we've got, to, we've got to connect a town to the national grid. And, and we, you know, there's, there's, there's lots of things, the sewerage system. You know, it's not just it's not it's not straightforward. Um, so at the moment at, at Wellborn, we've got some some huge infrastructure projects um, going, where which is sort of getting the laying the roads, laying the services, uh, the utilities, even even planting the green spaces. So, you know, when you go onto site today, you'll just see all these lots and lots of holes, lots of machines, uh, lots of men all um, digging away, laying all the the infrastructure. My my. Boss Marks, you know, he, he he sees the invoices coming in, and he finds it uh, galling that uh, that we're hiding all these uh, all these bits, all that money's going in under the ground, you know. <laughs> um, but but it's um, you know it, it's it's laying the foundations um, uh, for the town, and as I say, that even the green spaces, you know, we're putting in these green spaces, you know, where the parks will be and the ponds. So we're, they're they're going in right now. In fact, mm. you know, the pond one of the ponds has been lined uh, th th this week, and then. We'll put the trees in um, this month or next month. You know, getting getting the right season uh, for planting the trees. I guess trees. it's all got to acclimatise, right? It's not that you can just plod it in and it's going to work, and it, you've got to watch it and see how it grows and develops and it, nourishes. It, exactly, and um, you know, you know, the best time to plant a tree is the sort of this this time of the year or or in spring when um, um, you know you're not going to be having to water them through the summer months and stuff like that. So they'll all be going in, and then then we're going to hoard them all off. All these green spaces, we'll literally put big fences around them to sort of keep the builders um, and the and the diggers off those spaces, so that then they can mature uh, at the same same pace as what we're building the the houses next to it. And then it's almost like an outside version of a dust sheet. Exactly that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then and then there'll be the big reveal. The houses will be ready, and then you know we'll be able to open open all the public space up and you know it, it, there are so many schemes that you go around and uh the, the, the you look at it and you think well god it's like you're just looking onto a muddy field or a builder's site compound and stuff like that and i think for us it's um it's important there's that there's that wonderful phrase the first taste of an apple is done with the eye uh, and uh, and when people come to wellborn you know you want them to sort of rack up and sort of look at the place and think Oh, I want to live here, you know, because you're pushing buttons in terms of people's, you know, mindset as to opening them up to the. Oh, actually, I quite like this. And if you have something that doesn't look right, it doesn't look nice, then you know you lose them. They'll go and move somewhere else. So, so even as part of your role, mm. th does that consideration come into place? You talk about the the emotive element of purchasing a property. There is that. In my own experience, mm. you almost go somewhere. And you immediately feel something, don't you? Has that been considered at Wellborn? Oh, c c completely. Because I think you know, there's um, so you know, you go back to to um, go back hundreds, over a hundred years when the first the garden cities and the garden villages were first uh, launched. Um, you know, sort of at the turn of the nineteenth century, and it was it was a quest to drive up health standards, and and people were you know, so a lot of the Port Sunlight, which was the Lever Brothers, there was the Salt Air in Bradford uh, by Titus Salt, the Round Trees, Cadbury's, all these sort of these families sort of created these places to to sort of improve the uh, the lifestyles and the health of their workers, um, and 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 by making it a nice place, made ensured that you've got happy workers, you know. And I think so, you know. These days, you know, for us, it's it's really important, you know. But so you look back then, and it was a sort of real, you know, health issue. Nowadays, it's sort of we've become we've come through time, and now now our driver is about well-being, isn't it? You yeah. know, because it's t it, health is a given now. So now it's more about well, what more do we want? I mean, we we are becoming more and more demanding as people. And I guess as well, it's about 
gravitating people towards a, a dynamic, more outside way of living because we're Zooming at home for work, for socialising. Mm. We're sitting more on gaming systems perhaps and it's like it needs to be enticing what's out there, doesn't it? Yeah, oh, completely. I mean, we, we saw that with COVID, didn't we, where um, everyone was predict were predicting the, the worst crash and all that sort of stuff. And actually, property prices increased because there was a sort of flight to uh, what really mattered in life, you know, and it was like, well, if, if we're going to be, you know, I mean, actually, this is what we want to be. We want a nice place. We want access to the countryside and stuff like that. So so I think, well, yeah, I mean, well, Wellborn will give, will, give people, um, will give people that. But... but uh, you touched on that sort of that, you know, how do you give a place identity? Because identity is, is, is really important. You know, if you meet someone and say, where do you live? You know, I came out, I was like, one of the first questions, I don't know, it wasn't planned. I was like, where do you come from? Yeah. You know, because I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested. You know, we've chatted about, you know, where you grew up and all that, you know, that sort of stuff. And, and, and you ask the same and it's, it's, it, 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 tell, it, it gives you an ability to be able to sort of learn a lot about somebody. And I think when, with some of these housing estates that we've seen being created over the last sort of 30, 40 years, some of them have really lacked identity and that sense of place. And I think that's where I think people are starting to sort of, they're not in love with the places that they live in. And, you know, one of the things you need to do is you need to create that sort of sense of identity and ownership of, of the place because... You know, when we finish building uh, Wellborn in sort of 25, 30 years' time, it, it's, it's, it's like bringing up a child, you know, in terms of we will have done our job and ide in an ideal part, you know, world would we'll literally stand back and say, right, it's over to you, community. This is yours now. And um, It's that collective. You, you mentioned the, the lockdown experiences we've all had and, and maybe that human connection had been lost. We re-established it and like you're saying, with the Wellborn story and the mm. stewardship that starts at the top, it's almost going to be handed over. You guys are now all in this together. Thrive. Mm. It, 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 exactly. And, and, you know, if you've got like a sort of a scabby, cheap sort of, you know, housing estate that, that, a, that, a, that a house builder who's not really bothered about the long-term stewardship has just built, then people won't feel that sort of, you know, it'll just be a place, it'll be a transient place. They'll live there and then they'll move on. And the only reason people stay at those places is, kids and schools you know so so um yeah it, it's it, it is very important you know that sort of making sure it does feel right when you first arrive i, I want to delve into your experience more than 25 years in the industry of housing developments what kind of trends and changes have you seen and where do we currently find ourselves you've mentioned there about mm. possibly some of these soulless developments that have existed in more modern times but what other trends have you seen john well, so so I, I started in um, in the industry, and I sort of worked with a, with one of the best companies you could work. You know, it was a company called Bryant Homes. They had a fantastic sort of following. They built. They were based in the Midlands, but all over the country, and they really cared. You know, they used to prototype houses. Be, people would phone you up and say, "Oh, I'm moving from one particular region of the country to the other. I've, I live in a Victoria, and I want to I want to trade up to a Malden." And they would know your range in the same way that people would be attached to a brand, you know, like Ford or Vox or, mm. you know, back I was going to say, that sounds almost like how day. you shop for a car. Exactly, it, yeah. And, and people knew that knew the product. And it had um, it had what you call curb appeal as well. So people would look at the house and think, oh, that's a lovely house. It's, it, 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 felt, it felt pretty on the eye, you know. And, uh, um, and people, you'd get return customers. We, we changed a lot, you know, and, and a lot of those companies have all been bought by, and merged with others. And, and I think we've lost a lot as well. So now... I mean, perversely, a lot of it was lost on the back of changes in the planning system where people said, oh, we want to have, we don't want standard house types. We want to have houses that are designed sort of for a particular site. And, and I don't think that's worked particularly well because a lot of the house builders, they haven't really focused on honing, you know, a, a, a particular type of house. What they've done is they've ended up just redesigning, just designing houses quickly mm. and not necessarily good houses. And... Um, so I think what we've seen over the last, you know, probably 15 years is, is, a, is a change in that model. I mean, we've got, uh, you know, some of the biggest house builders, probably only three or four of them now, and they've all bought all the smaller house builders and, um, and it's a very different economic model. So how much pressure is there externally, I, I don't know, from maybe local authorities or, or bigger government entities to get it done as quickly as possible once they green light? Is there a big pressure like yeah, that? yeah, there is, and, and and this is this this is this is the tension I think, and this is where uh, you know the, the the big the big house builders have have a job to do in terms of they do deliver homes very quickly, 
you know, I mean, they it, it, it could be, they could be better in my opinion. Um, um, that they would argue against that, but, but, um, there is a, there is a definitely a drive to sort of, once you've got your consent, get, get them built as quick as possible because we need the homes and there is a shortage of homes. So, um, you know, I mean, personally, I, I would, I would rather wait for a, you know, a, a better quality home than, uh, than not. So, but, uh, I mean, well, Wellborn's not the, um, it's not the sort of the silver bullet for the housing, uh, issues that we're suffering today at all. You know, we're not, and we're not, we're not saying that every development should be like Wellborn. It's, it, there's, 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 there's some very different, um, you know, sort of ingredients to Wellborn than, than you would have for a lot of the uh, the big housing schemes around the country. Well, really, th that's what we want to emphasise. Mm. The care and consideration, this isn't about, okay, quick, pack it up, mm. get it going, see you later. What is different about the Wellborn experience for not only potential residents, but also the larger community in this region? Yeah, I, I, think, I think what we've seen over the probably 30 years along the M27 is, is you've seen a lot of these big development sites that get allocated by the councils because the councils are under pressure to deliver the houses and they've allocated them and they've been sort of promoted by, um, you know, one or two or three or four of the house builders. And they've, and they've just de de delivered these schemes where they haven't really got that sort of, uh, sort of uh, holistic approach to the master planning. So uh, what do I mean by that? I mean that in terms of there's probably three or four house builders will be, delivering a scheme and they are no not one of them has sort of said hang on a minute let's get the village center in because they're not village center developers they're the house builders yeah um and i think that's where wellborn's gonna be quite different because wellborn uh what we've done here is we've got all the land into one ownership and we're able to sort of sit back we're taking this it's called the lead developer role so we're the guys who are putting all the infrastructure in and then we're then identifying where the housing parcels are where the infrastructure, the schools, the village centre, the pubs, or community halls, all these sorts of things, and saying, right, okay, look, we're, we're, we're going to deliver those bits and you guys focus on building the uh, building the homes. So where did this idea come from? Is it the seed from Mark Thistleweight or elsewhere? So it's a, it's a bit of both. So definitely from, from the landowner, um, Mark. And, you know, he's... I, I first met Mark because I was on the other side of the table to him, so I worked for Granger. And we delivered Granger, one of the best at delivering new communities. And we were, we had places all over the country. We had lots of urban regeneration schemes, things like that. And um, we had a scheme uh, with him uh, down uh, near Waterlooville, just down the road. And I was on the other side of the table, and we were delivering it. And Mark, Mark was always wanting more from it. You know, in terms of you, you know, he was always pushing us to deliver things like the village centre. And you know, why, you know, why didn't you, you, get, you know? Build the build the facilities quicker, and of course, you sit there and you think, well, it's, it's quite it's quite difficult because you've got a cash flow, you've got to make sure it works financially, um, and and at Granger we'd bought the land. So what Mark what Mark did, has done here at Wellborn is he's basically sort of said, well, look, okay, let's 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 make sure we change the model a bit so we can take that long term approach and build up the uh, so we're not constrained by, you know. IRRs, return on capital, all that sort of stuff that the, the the developers are. So let's 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 change the model and make sure that we do deliver all these bits. And if we do deliver all those bits and we make it a better place to live, the more people will want to live here and therefore it'll be more successful. So so that that, that that's that's come in terms of who, who, you know where's the driver? Marks he's very open minded and he's 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 clear that he wants this to be a success. My part is, is I'm, I'm the delivery person. So he's seen what I've done in the past and he came and said to me, come and, come and work for me. And uh, so it's so a sort of culmination of the two, really, the two of us. It works quite well. A bit like some of the old garden villages, actually, where you used, very often you had two very different sort of characters, you know, delivering the scheme. There was one, one person who was sort of the, uh, the owner and the sort of the finances and then the other person who, who was actually... Doing the, uh, doing the hard work. And like so. you said, this balance almost of the, the visionary, maybe the creative, the holistic element, but you're going, no, 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 Look, listen, we need to do this, we need to do that. That can only be achieved by X, Y, and Z. And yeah, you need it, that balance. It does, and, it, and it, work, it works very well because there are certain things that, because of my previous life in working for you know, corporates and, and PLCs, there are certain things that I'd say, well, I'm not sure that's, that's not really a, you know, I'm not sure we ought to be doing that because of you know, the X, Y, Z. And, and, and and it's quite liberating actually for Mark for Mark to be able to sort of just actually we can do it can't we and I was like well if you think about it we, we I guess yeah, I guess we can within the constraints and all that sort of stuff and and you know it, it's it, it's enabled us to be able to do stuff that we'd never ever 
be able to do if we were, you know, constrained by the world of sort of the, cor the corporate world, you know. Do you feel then that this approach is going to change your perspective on delivering new schemes as you move forwards? Well, I, I don't think so. It's, it's always something that I always wanted to do. So this is, so whenever, um, so at Granger, we used to have a, a most fantastic supportive uh, board and we used to be delivering new communities and um, and they were um, they were they were very good. Our, our chairman um, Robin Broadhurst was was keen that we were seen as as delivering the best new communities. Um, so so I sort of I had that support when I was at Granger, but I guess I guess here it's just that it's it's we've got the raw material, so we've got the land. And that's that's the most important thing because we've got the land and the and the family have owned the land for for a number of years. It, it's given us the ability to be able to do stuff that we wouldn't be able to do had we been at a corporate. But uh, I want to speak about some of the details now for the Wellborn mm. Project. I know it's very important uh, for Buckland as an organisation to look at attention to detail mm. in the planning, and also you're very keen to involve local SMEs mm. in the project as well. Why is that so important as part of the Wellborn identity? Um, in terms of the, f the first point, in terms of the detail, it's, it's you know, there's that laboured phrase, the devil's in the detail and all that sort of stuff. And um, and, it, and it is important, you know, to have um, things that make you think, oh, that's quite, that's not quite normal. Or, you know, whether it's a sort of a, a, a folly, whether it's um, uh, materials that you would sort of think, oh, that's, that's, that's slightly different. So things like sort of colours of tarmac or, the, or or slabs, you know, sort of making, you know, in terms of paving slabs, making sure that you get the right sort of, um, you know, colours and stuff like that. So you can... So you have got some creativity in there, although you say you're Mr Practical. <laughs> I do, yeah. I know, yeah. In fact, in fact, one of the, the biggest things I really enjoy is the landscaping as well. And, right. I, and, and I wouldn't profess to being a, a landscape architect, but but making sure that the place looks mm. looks green and is, uh, is, is really important to me as well. So... The types of hedges but yeah no it, it is i guess it is yeah it's and also it's it, it's it's knowing knowing what doesn't work as well so mm. you know when you you know I, I my poor poor wife you know we, we drive around the country and i'm always pulling her into a some sort of some sort of development um, <laughs> i just want to look at the paving slabs <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly yeah. And, and even even she's even she knows sometimes you know before she but oh my god it's like we're, going, we're not going on another housing development are we and i'd be like yeah well and but even now she, she just like takes it and she's just like oh i don't like that and i don't like that and i'm like well she's got it oh, she's got involved yeah, in the process yeah, that's it. so um so i think it's um i think it's, it's 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 good to see what what doesn't doesn't work you know we have this sort of thing the good the bad and the ugly you know where we we go around i mean i, I my my phone is uh, um always you know, on social media it's like you know show us what your last photo is and mine's normally a, a gully curb detail it's a <laughs> you know a brick type or a brick bond yeah. or a mortar you know it's just uh, this is all yeah. innovation, though, isn't it? Because, you know, for the everyman, someone like myself, it's details that I wouldn't even acknowledge, but it aids in that eureka moment when I do arrive and I'm like, this is where I want to build my home and my nest. Yeah. I, I, there are some things that we talk about in our design meetings that you, you would not you would not believe the detail that we get involved in. And there's sometimes I have to sort of just, I'm, I'm just like, oh, we, we ought to minute this one day. It's quite, quite hilarious whether it's, you know, um, I was going to say bondage, but the, the brick bond, <laughs> the brick brick bonds, you know, and the mortar bonds, you know. Um, uh, so whether we go for stretcher or for Flemish, and that sort of discussion never takes place with a normal uh, development. But um, but it's important, and we sometimes question whether or not the average person would would recognise it or notice it. I, th I think they, I think they probably would, but it, it, it might have to be pointed out to them that their house has been built in a particular way. But also the package. I think overall you're going to feel the results of it, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you know, when you when you walk onto Wellborn in five, ten years' time on any of the streets, it will feel so different to your normal housing estate. And so, if, if you stood in the middle of the road, um, you would be able to look down the road and you would see grass verges, you'd see footpaths, you'd see hedges. Small front gardens, you know, so only only two two meters, but enough to give give the house that defensible space. That is completely different. So any new housing estate you go on today, it's just footpath, uh, so curb footpath, and then the house. It's all tightly crammed in. It's very hard, so you get a very sort of mineral feel mm. you know not vegetable in terms of yeah uh, very man-made and you don't want that particularly in such a rural area like hampshire mm, of course yeah and uh, you know with biodiversity being 
um, you know, sort of a, a huge thing these days in terms of creating, uh, you know, habitats for the wildlife. You know, you start putting in the verges, the trees, um, and the and the hedgerows, and it really does help to uh, to increase the biodiversity. And part of the uniqueness as well, you, you've actually got three different SME house builders from the local region providing mm. the housing. How how does that work? That you are able to maintain harmony within that, whilst you want to give this bespoke attention to detail. Yeah, well, it's, it's it was quite interesting because we went out. We want we knew that we probably couldn't be. Um, we, we we knew that we needed a a house builder that that would work with us in terms of wanting to build well-born homes at Wellborn and not necessarily their standard houses. And you said they're A, so initially it was thought that it would be one provider. Um, well, we thought we might get the first t two. Mm. And, and then um, we ended up going out and we went. We met about 10 uh, householders that we thought we could work with, and, and all of them were, were, were very good. Um, and then we shortlisted it down to, uh, down to three in the end, and we, and there was, we couldn't really sort of differentiate uh, between the three of them. And we've ended, um, we ended up, one, well, we got fries from Dorset, uh, we got pies from Oxfordshire and uh, Thacom from Sussex. And they're all very good quality builders. They're, it's, they're, um, I say, as you say, called SMEs. I mean, still, still, I think they build between sort of, you know, three and 600 houses between them in terms of the range. Um, they're, they're, they're exceptional, good, exceptionally good quality. Um, they, um, uh, they've got a willingness to, they wanted to be at, at Wellborn, like, like the 10 did actually, you know, it was amazing. You know, we sort of, we thought that we might be going out to sort of court people to come and work uh, with us. And actually we found that actually they, they'd already identified us, a lot of them, you know, in terms of they wanted to come and work, um, work at Wellborn. Even if they knew that the project was a little out of the ordinary perhaps? Yeah, exactly. So, so the, because they were the, the, these sort of regional house builders, it's sort of for them, it was it was great because uh, you know for the everyman someone like myself it's details that i wouldn't even acknowledge but it aids in that eureka moment when i do arrive and i'm like this is where i want to build my home and my nest the big volume boys and so i think what we've done here is because because we're always doing things that are slightly different we're you know we're sort of a um and, and with Mark, you know, as, as I've described, you know, sort of saying, yes, we can. We actually ended up changing the sort of the financial model that you normally have. So normally as a lead developer, you just sell land to a house builder. They'd come in and buy it and they'd go and build. And, and you would sort of work with them roughly to make sure you got the right quality. What we did here is because these house builders, uh, they weren't able to come and buy two, 300 houses in a, in, a, in a parcel lot. So what we said is to them is, well, hang on a minute, well, let's, t let's turn the model on its head. So work in a joint venture with us. Now, what that gives us, it gives us the ability to um, enable them to participate in Wellborn. So we, we get a good quality builder, so tick. Um, we also get the ability to stay in there to... So when, if we built a house and we looked at it and thought, oh, I don't like that, it gives us the ability because we're the joint venture partner to say, actually, let's change it. Let's not, let's not make that mistake twice. So it gives us that flexibility. And, of course, we've got that sort of that fantastic quality as well. So. Um, just talking about the details that are going to be provided uh, from these house builders, what elements will residents be able to personalise their own homes? Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the, the residents will, will buy into their, in, in, into their home just like any other housing site. The, 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 the difference here is that um, we've, we'll have certain controls. So there are, it's, 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 in terms of personalising the house, they won't be able to come in and... Uh, you know, completely knock it around. And, and um, so it's, it's going to be a bit like some of the garden villages that were built 100 years ago, where you've got certain controls to maintain the, the integrity of the scheme going forward um, inside, inside, inside uh, the houses. So these will be the most modern houses. They will look very traditional, but inside they'll be the most modern. So we'll have all the sort of the, we've got uh, cooling, we've got the, the, the latest environmentally friendly uh, uh, heating, which I think you're going to speak to my colleague about, so I'm not going to steal his thunder. Um, we've got the uh, super fast fibre, so sort of almost unlimited in terms of um, uh, the data connections and stuff like That's that. That's a big investment as well somewhere like here, isn't it? Because you don't have super fast fibre in the ground in a lot of uh, more rural areas. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and we've, um, we've, we've developed a system ourselves, you know, where we're going to be putting four fibres into each, you know, four in terms of into each house so that then we can um, can give the uh, the purchaser access to sort of some of the best uh, uh, speeds and uh, and capabilities
So as we draw this conversation to a close, I guess one of the things I really want to do is give an invitation out there for people of interest to explore. So whether they want to be a, a potential resident, whether it's just they're interested in what this project is going to bring to the local region, where can they find out more information at the moment? Um, the the website's probably the best thing. So, social media is very good. I'm not, I'm not very good at uh, good at that, but uh, but the team are and they and they uh, with with the sort of the Instagrams, you know, they'll be sort of putting on pictures of the regular progress. updates. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's great. We 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 send a drone up every couple of weeks just to chronicle uh, the start of the birth of this new town. And and that's um, that's a sort of something that uh, that Mark was sort of very keen to do because all these big schemes in the country. You know, I sort of go back and I've got all you know you've seen. I've got sort of lots of the old historic books from some of the first um, garden villages. And to see the images of when they were built and you know how they, how they grew to start with, I, f I find it fascinating. So I think what we're trying to do is to try and make sure that, I mean, for no benefit of us really, um, other than the fact that maybe in 100, 200 years that people living there will be able to see how the town grew. And with technology as it is today, we've got drones that go up, they go to the same spot, and they're going to be able to then stitch it all together. So hopefully, I'm, I'm anticipating in 20 years, they'll be able to press play on a on a little movie and they'll be able to see how the town uh, town grew. That's really lovely. It reminds me of this, that philosophical quote that good men plant seeds under the shade of which they will never see. Or something along those lines. You probably even know it better than me. No, I'm well, well, <laughs> best to, but I think, yes, exactly. Yes, yeah. Um, and, and just to tease those that are tuned in as well, phase one, the first 600 houses will be completed in 2024. What can we expect from that phase one? So, so th th again, the difference here at, at Wellborn is you're going to get the first phase of the houses. So there's going to be, so we're building 600 homes with the three house builders, so 200 each. But then, then you've got the village centre. So the village centre deliveries is a huge um, uh, piece of infrastructure, you know, in terms of we've got the pubs, we've got the shops. All it's going to be a things. real hub for the community, isn't it? Yeah. Now that, and this, and this comes back to that sort of that, that uh, conversation earlier about identity. So, you know, when people first come to Wellborn, so in 2026, stroke 2027, they'll be able to turn up to Wellborn and it'll feel like any sort of village in Hampshire. Now, it will feel very new. We appreciate that. But it's, it's been designed so that, it, so that it looks like it's organically grown over time. And over the years, it will bed in and, and, it'll, and it'll age appropriately. But, but that, um, that village centre where you've got all the cafes and stuff like that, people will come and look to buy a house and they'll probably hopefully sit down in the cafe, you know, with the brochures that they've just seen the house of, and hopefully they'll be making those those decisions to buy and to and to set their roots down in in Wellborn. And as you and I know, once once you know you get a young couple, they fall in love, they come to Wellborn, fall in love again with the houses, then the place, and then then they set the roots down. They'll have children. You've got the schools, so the children will go to the schools, and then of course, then then of course, what happens? Oh, we can't move anywhere because we've got children and yeah. they're in the school. And you've got system. playground friends as well. Yeah. This support network for childcare and all of the stuff and, that comes and, into play. And the, the schools actually, it's like for, for developments, having a, having the schools on the development, it's like having it's like a catalyst, it's like oxygen for for, for getting a, a new town growing because you know, and I don't know if you've got children and you've had that sort of experience, but when you, you, you think you've got enough friends in life and then you go, then your children go to school and then all of a sudden you get a whole new cohort of friends. Mm. And, that's, and that's really good uh, for, for the growth of new towns because people meet by the school gates. They, they meet when they're doing the play dates and stuff like that. And that really helps to sort of grow that, that feeling and, and, and so that you're not just sort of living in a house that, uh, uh, you know, and you don't, where you don't meet your neighbours and stuff like that, so... Well, John Beresford, it's been a pleasure to catch up with you as part of the Wellborn podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much. And for those of you tuned in out there, we invite you now to join the journey as well by heading over to the website at www.wellborn.co.uk. And as well, you can follow all developments across Facebook, LinkedIn and Instagram at Wellborn UK. Thank you for watching.